Well, it is a thrilling climax to a pot boiler. The market regulator SEBI has blown the lid off a forgery masterminded by the promoter of Pyramid Saimira, Nirmal Kotecha, and investigations have revealed a nexus between him, Rakesh Sharma, who's a PR agent representing the agency Ad Factors, as well as journalist Rajesh Unni Krishnan and a few market operators. Harsha. SEBI has banned Nirmal Kotecha for masterminding the forgery of a SEBI letter. It has also barred another promoter, P.S. Saminathan, for spreading misleading information. On what's all tonight, we ask, how did this take place? Joining us now uh, is Vivek Law with the highlights of what really happened. Vivek. The pot boiler, it certainly is a completely bizarre set of developments, really, if one looks at this entire 50-page-plus order. But let me try and put this into some perspective very quickly. First of all, let's tell our viewers, why are we doing this? Why are we talking about this order in the first place? Just let's go back to December 21st, 22nd. There were two sets of stories that appeared in various newspapers which talked of a SEBI order to the promoters of Pyramid Saimira to make an open offer because they had violated certain takeover norms on creeping acquisition. Now, on 22nd, which is a Monday, uh, when the market opened, the stock was up 10%. Mind you, the share at that point of time was trading at roughly about 70 rupees. The open offer was sought to have been directed by SEBI allegedly at 250 rupees. So quite clearly, the stock shot up in the morning. By about 10.30, the Pyramid Samira management said they had not received any such letter from SEBI. And the stock kind of cooled down. By the end of the day, the stock was down about 10 rupees. Now, this is important because this is why this entire forged letter of SEBI activity was done. Now, let me break this up into two. First, why was this done and how did the forged letter activity happen? Now, why was it done seems pretty clear from the SEBI investigation. Nirmal Kotecha, through his maternal uncle, uh, made a gain of 20 lakh rupees, according to SEBI, on just that one day. Nirmal Kotecha, according to SEBI's investigations, was a buyer in the Pyramid Samira stock for several months. And on that day, that is December 22nd, he was the highest net seller, uh, Sometimes the percentage went up to even as much as 40 to 50 percent, uh, his percentage of the total net sales. Uh, he transacted not just on his own name, he was transacting through several people. One of them was his maternal uncle, as I said, and even just in that one period, the gain itself was 20 lakh rupees. Quite clearly, according to SEBI, Nirmal Kotecha was building up his positions in this particular stock. This was really what it appears like a last-ditch attempt to shoot the stock price up and get out of it. There were some other people he used as well. Mind you, there are 230 entities who have been uh, put out of the markets by SEBI for having been hand in glove through various either banking or share transactions with Nirmal Kotecha. But a couple of them sound extremely interesting. As I said, the maternal uncle bit. There was another person called Amol Kokane. Mind you, he's an engineering student who lives in Navi, Mumbai. He was using really the phone which Kotecha claimed was his mobile number. This boy's brother-in-law who died uh, in, uh, in, a, in an accident in November last year was actually working for a broking outfit and he was really a front for Kotecha as uh, Sevi brings it out in his order. He was really the person who had given an absolute free run to Kotecha to operate the DMAT accounts and the transactions were being done on the brother-in-law's name. When the brother-in-law died, it got transferred onto this boy Amol Kokane's name. His family income was 1 lakh to 5 lakh but mind you, his mobile phone bill per month was 40,000 rupees. Now, what's really happened, therefore, there are heavy cash transactions by Kotecha, even as on the day when this whole letter was being drafted, the forged letter. Now, let's come to the point of how the entire forgery of the letter happened. Now, what's really happened is that Kotecha, Rakesh Sharma, who used to work with a PR agency at Factors, as you mentioned, Shireen, uh, he and a journalist with the Economic Times, Rajesh Unni Krishnan. Now, these three, according to SEBI, really plotted sending this letter out to various media vehicles, newspapers and to channels. Now, obviously, this was not sent officially from the company or from the PR agency. It was sent by them using their old contacts. They even contacted former journalists who were based in uh, Calcutta, to send this out to further journalists out there, whoever they knew. So clearly it was not official the way it was being sent. It was sent to people who they knew or they thought they would know and they would manage to get the story in. When a few journalists started calling up the company secretary of, the, uh, uh, of Pyramid Samira to find out whether this letter was genuine at all or not, 
uh, they realized that uh, the game might just go away. So they planted a fake company secretary. A number of a person was given. He was impersonating as the company secretary and he kept claiming, yes, we have received such a letter. It was perfectly done. Unfortunately, when the news came out and when Sebi realized that this letter was forged, uh, it just went beyond and did a complete audit trail of the bank statements. Very audacious, but I'm very surprised that uh, they thought they would get away with it. They haven't. Mind you, we must add here that in these four months, SEBI has gone through bank transactions. It has actually gone back and monitored the location of these people uh, from mobile towers, uh, information that they've got from mobile operators. And it seems like an extremely thorough investigation which has been carried out in four months. Mind you, uh, P.S. Saminathan, now that's the other key. Why is he barred? Now that's the last question that I'd like to address here. He has been held guilty of having been in fairly active transactional touch with Kotecha. He has been held guilty of uh, actually facilitating uh, Kotecha's buying of the shares and subsequent selling of the shares. Uh, they are not involved, uh, according to the SEBI order, as far as the forgery side of this letter is concerned. But uh, he's also accused of actually buying shares at 45 rupees a share when he was telling the media that my share is heavily undervalued and its fair value should actually be 200 rupees. Uh, he's also accused of making wrong disclosures of his own shareholding uh, and not complying with regulations which uh, mandate disclosure of your shareholding. And uh, finally, uh, there were certain book entry transactions with another broking firm uh, in between, uh, Kotecha as well as Sami Nathan, which was Keynote Capital. Sebi has found Keynote Capital was giving out research reports which were not really justifying uh, the true sense or the true value, and therefore it has barred Keynote Capital from uh, issuing any further fresh recommendations. Mind you, this is an interim order. Very importantly, this order has been sent to the Reserve Bank of India. It's been sent to the Financial Intelligence Unit. It has been sent to the Income Tax Department right. because money laundering has been suspected. My sense is that there is a lot more that is going to unfold in this particular case in the coming days and weeks.